delicious French fruit tart. A French fruit tart? I have very little experience with any type of pastry, and especially one that looks like that. The secret to this beautiful dessert is finding the perfect balance between several stunning components. First, the buttery pastry, which must be baked to a crisp and flaky golden brown. Secondly, a silky smooth layer of vanilla bean pastry cream, stirred to the perfect consistency. And to top it all off, a stunning arrangement of fresh fruit, all coated in a deliciously light apple glaze. The slightest misstep could end your MasterChef Canada journey. Please come up and have a taste. I'm from New Brunswick. I've never seen a French fruit tart at any of the bakeries that I go to. This is way out of my expertise. This is going to be hard. This is going to be really difficult to replicate. I'm not really as strong with dessert as I am with savory stuff, but you know what? I'm going to bring it. I'm going to make a perfect pastry. It's going to be art in a tart. Making perfect pastry under a 45-minute time clock is never, ever easy. This is the first time two cooks are going home in a pressure test. You can cut the tension here with a knife. The pressure is huge. You know, this is a replication challenge. There are three major components to making this French fruit tart. The pastry, the pastry cream, and fruit. Today has to be a shining moment for me. Strategy here is to not make any mistakes. It's got to be perfect. Refined pastry crust is key. You've got to delicately work the pastry. They have to cook that pastry to perfection. If it's too thin, it'll break. If it's too thick, it'll be raw in the middle. The pastry cream, you have to whip up your egg yolks with the sugar, scald your milk and cream, and slowly cook it out. Then you can flavor it with your vanilla. You can't improvise with pastry. You either do it well, or it's a disaster. There's nowhere to hide. I don't know. Worried about David here? Dough is sticking. I'm looking at a mess. I keep on trying to pull it off. It's not working. This is horrible. I'm starting again. You gotta make it beautiful. It's gotta taste good. It's gotta look good. A lot of things to go wrong. John, how you feeling? Hey, chef. Feeling great, chef. I'm used to working under pressure. I love it. Who do you think's going home? Probably Andrew's going home. His nerves are getting to him. Who's the other one? I don't know. So it's not going to be you, eh? Oh, no, it's definitely not. <laughs> I'm not going home. Well, I'll leave you dead. Good luck. Andrew. Hello, Chef. How are you feeling? I'm not feeling super confident, but you know what? I'm not going out with a fight, so. A lot of your fellow home cooks after the team challenge seem very frustrated oh. with you. Yeah. I, I feel guilty about that. So who do you think's going home? I think it's a possibility John might go home today. John, really? Yeah. I don't think he's going to pull it out? I haven't looked back. I'm running my own race right now, Chef. It's not my concern what he's doing. I just want to be better. All right, we'll keep your eye on the clock. Thank you, Chef. All right, good luck. Thank you. When I get stressed at home, I bake, which is very befitting in this situation. Lynn has this focus that I have not seen in her yet. Well, Andrew seems to be very nervous. He is running all over the place super fast, like a jackrabbit. I need to fight to win. Cody is lagging behind right now. He doesn't have good time management. I'm trying to plan three steps ahead here. David. Yes, Chef. How are you feeling right now? Isn't this in your comfort zone? It certainly isn't. I'm more of a bourbon milkshake kind of guy. Is there any component uh, you might find particularly difficult? The presentation. It's just it's not in my wheelhouse. How did it make you feel when you have two people going home on this challenge? <laughs> it's certainly up the stakes. Well, I think you've surprised yourself before in this competition. You have, Chef. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Good luck with it. Come on, let's get going! The tart should be out and your cream should be in. I pull the tart out and it's looking good. I'm gonna keep on pushing. Do my best to make it look beautiful and taste delicious. Pastry is delicate. I'm looking down and I see John using a spatula to smear his pastry cream on. But these big hands are soft, so I'll be all right. I'm gonna start cutting my fruits. This tart has to be very exact. If it's not perfect, I'm going home. Look at Lynn. Look at the way she handles the knife. Precision. The fruits have to be cut exactly the same. It has to be cut perfectly. You have 10 minutes left. Holy Hannah. 
Cody's in the most trouble right now. Cody can't seem to get his pastry off of the pan. Look at Cody. He's losing valuable time. It's not cooperating very nicely. My god. He is so far behind right now. I'm nervous at this point. There he goes. He's got it. Yes, thank you. I need to hurry up. I need every single second that I have. Cody's in serious trouble. He still has to put all the fruit down, plus he has to glaze. I don't think Cody's gonna make it. I have to move. I really, really, really have to move. Final two minutes! This is really freaking intense, man. Feel me now, Hans. You're going home today. Oh, John is the first one to actually start glazing. You glaze the top of the fruit, it's got to be clean sheen. So it looks like glass. Good. 30 seconds! This is cutting it really close. Cody's not going to make it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Amazing. Relief. <laughs> I think that I'm gonna be okay. I'm looking over at the other people's. And I'm going, I got this. It's time to taste your French fruit tarts. David, the first thing that I notice is how high the fruit sits. It's as if the fruit just wants to sort of jump out. It looks great. Let's see how it cuts. Looks like some real craftsmanship there, David. Thank you. Thin crust, and to get the pastry that even all the way. It's a little finesse. Let's see how it tastes. A nice crispness to the pastry. The Pastry cream could have been just a tad softer. The fruit, if you're going to cut thick, have them all thick. That's the consistency, and yours has that consistency. All in all, quite impressive. Thank you, Chef. Lynn, how are you? Good, how are you, Chef? Oh, look how exact that is. It's beautiful. did not skimp on the pastry cream, did you? No, sir, because it tastes yummy. I don't, I don't find any faults in this tart. Thank you, Chef. You just keep getting better, Lynn. Thank the you. The crust is, I mean, it's like, it's like a machine did it. The cream is light, thin crust, and again, 45 minutes. I've never made one of these before ever, so I'm actually surprising myself every day that I'm here. Keep doing that, and you might land the biggest surprise. Thank you, Chef. I just want a little salt. <laughs> Next up is Jennifer, a self-described chatterbox from Vernon, BC. My strategy to get a white apron, I am going to talk my way into those judges' hearts and help them to realize that I am going to be Canada's next master chef. They are gonna love this pie. My cooking style and my personality are pretty much one and the same. Oh, snap! Just like me being loud and bold and sometimes a bit obnoxious, so is my food. It's go time! Hi there. Hi, gentlemen. I'm Jennifer. So what is the dish you're preparing for us? Blueberry, basil, and goat cheese pie. Not your grandmother's blueberry pie. I make the best pie crust recipe, hands down, because I think that if I served you anything less than that, it would be an absolute disrespectful move on my part. You've got five minutes to present us with your dish, okay? I talk a lot when I'm nervous, can you tell? I have waited my whole life for this moment. You get one crack. This is a turning point in my life. I'm picked last in sports. I was a terrible athlete. Oh my gosh, we won't even go there. You're running out of time. You gotta go. I was never the popular kid in school. In fact, I got picked on a lot. So if anybody is watching this right now from where I grew up, <laughs> lots changed. <laughs> so going home, 
I have to tell you is not an option, and I will fight to the death to make sure that I'm walking out of there with that white apron. Jennifer, Jennifer, are you finished? <laughs> it's ready for your tasting. What I have for you is a blueberry basil and goat cheese pie top. It's kind of like the top of the muffin. It's always the best part. What's your food dream, Jennifer? I would love to have a food truck. And you think this pie will get you there? That pie is absolutely going to get me there because you want to know something about this pie? I've had people say they don't like blueberries. People that don't like pie in general tell me, wow, I would eat this pie again. Thanks, Jennifer. Tell me, Jennifer, I mean, this is not my grandmother's pie, right? It's nobody's grandmother's nobody's pie. pie. I don't want to stereotype myself as the pie girl. Well? I realize that people look at what I've made and that said, oh, you're the pie girl, huh? Just, just listen, listen. I know, I don't ever shut up. There's definitely a lot going on there. I'm speechless. I want to ask you what you think about this pie, because you think it's delicious, right? So does everybody back there. <laughs> smells good. You should see how it tastes. So Jennifer, you know, for me, the pie, had some great layers, great complexity. The crust was light. The filling had some very fresh, bright flavors. I'm a yes. Yes. Jennifer, not your grandmother's pie is not for me. That pie was lacking in texture. I wanted something that was a nice contrast to the rich sort of bright flavors. It's a no. Jennifer, the crust nice and crispy, and I can taste that blueberry. Growing up in Scarborough, I love blueberry. I had some growing in my backyard. I'm just concerned about your listening skill. Can you promise me just one thing? Can you just keep quiet for five seconds so I can put an apron around your neck? Oh my gosh. Alvin, you're getting a full body hug. Oh, I'm looking well at that too. Oh, <laughs> yes. I've got a crew that I am willing to listen and become Canada's next master chef. That pork chop is calling my name, but I cook meat twice, so I gotta show them that I can do something besides meat. So I'm gonna make cream cheese tarts. It's out of my comfort zone. I'm making an empanada. Sweet and a bit of heat to tickle the back of your throat. Finally in the kitchen, I finally get to rock my skills. I'm excited to be able to do a cheesecake. Eileen. Sir. What's the hardest part in this challenge for you? Uh, in the mystery box, there is ingredients that I'm not comfortable with. Like what? The kale. I've never cooked with kale. I'm sure in the army that you ate tons of kale. There wasn't any of this in the military. What are you making? I am making maple fudge pie with uh, cream cheese, whipped cream, and a berry coulis. Good luck. Thank you very much. Perfect. I'm liking it. John, how are you? Oh, good. What's happening here? Well, what I'm making is three different Philly cream cheese tarts. What's the toughest part of this dish for you? Um, just kind of making it look pretty. You think it's a smart idea? I got to really go for it, show you guys what I can do. Good luck. Fire it up. Five minutes. What's happening here, guys? Oh, my god. Oh, dear god in heaven. Debbie's really struggling with that cheesecake. Ah. Uh. She's trying to take the cheesecake out of a mold, but it's going to be stuck. She didn't line it with anything. I was blown away by John. He's baking. I didn't think he would have pastry chef hands. He's a bit of a dark horse. The dish is a maple fudge pie with whipped cream cheese and wild berry coulis. The flavor of the maple is wonderful. The smooth, rich, velvety textures, perfect. Pastry dough, I think, is a nice thickness, even. The tastes, spot on. 
Lynn, you mentioned that you get doubted a lot and you have to work harder than everyone else. Yes, Chef. That's why I decided to make my own pie crust, Chef. Well, the crust could use five more minutes, but the topping is so delicious, it almost doesn't matter. It's a very good dish. Thank, Thank you. you, Chef. Well, what I got here is fabulous Philadelphia cream cheese tarts. One is a cherry and vanilla. In the middle, we have a nice lemon and a walnut maple blackberry. We're very surprised. <laughs> we would never think that you can come up with something so delicate and pretty. I like the sound of that crispy cracking of that phyllo. Thank you, Chef. You know, John, they're beautiful. I like it for two reasons. First, everything comes together, and that's very important. Secondly, you know, I'm not a sweet guy, but the sweetness is perfect. Beautiful dish. Thank you. Beautiful. Three great flavors, each one rich, full, bright, and you've proven you can cook a great dessert. Wow. Thank you. Happy birthday! Balloons? Really? Balloons, a fixture at every birthday party, and no birthday party would be complete without a cake. I can't believe it. It's my son JJ's birthday today. Your challenge today is to create the most imaginative and delicious birthday cake you've ever had. Christopher, he's gonna come out swinging and swinging hard. And birthdays aren't just about cake and balloons. They're also about gifts. And here's one for all of you. In tonight's mystery box, we're choosing two winners. Wow. Both will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. I have not won one challenge outright. I'm ready to knock everything out of the park. It's JJ's birthday, I'm putting it, everything into it. You will have one hour and 30 minutes to plan, bake, and decorate a stunning four-layer birthday cake. I think I made a two-layer cake before, and that was pushing it, so four layers, pretty challenging. You'll also have access to a beautiful specialty pantry, full of the finest fruits, nuts, and sweet decorations. Everything you need to make a perfect birthday cake that tells us something about you. Are you ready? Yes, yes sir. sir! Your time starts now! Chocolate. So the challenge today is they have to make a birthday cake that represents who they are. After seeing what's in the specialty pantry, there is no excuses for a boring cake here. Ah, I've never made a cake. Baking, it's just so far out of my comfort zone. Anyone see gold powder? Birthday cakes are what inspired me to start baking. I know with this dish, I'm going to wow the judges. Making a layer cake, it's more difficult than it sounds. There's a lot that can go wrong. If you don't cream your eggs and your butter properly, you're gonna have raw patches of flour. Everything has to be incorporated so you have a nice, light, and airy cake. John, can I have one of your bananas? I don't enjoy cake. Favorite desserts as a child was going for banana splits, so I'm, I'm actually gonna make a banana split cake. Gotta get this moisture out of here. The first cake I ever loved was a red velvet cake, but I love blue suede shoes more than I love red velvet cake, so I'm making a blue suede shoe velvet cake. I met my girlfriend wearing blue suede shoes for the first couple months, she'd only call me blue suede shoes. So. I'm making chocolate cake for my dad. I think it's gonna be the most beautiful cake of the bunch. So there's a lot of inspiration here being drawn by family. I'm gonna make banana nut cake. This is for my sister. She makes the best banana bread in the world, and I never get to make her a birthday cake. I've always been gone playing football, so this is for her. I'm making a mint chocolate birthday cake. It's my husband's favorite. I'm not the uh, strong cake guy, but I'm gonna make a chocolate cake with peanut butter. My son's JJ's favorite two ingredients. My birthday is Christmas Day. I usually reach for a generous slice of apple pie with ice cream on top. So I'm uh, basically making this cake as a play on the apple pie, and hopefully they like what I uh, present today. What do you think has the advantage in this competition? I'm gonna say Tammy, number one, because uh, she has six kids and uh, baking birthday cakes. Sounds like it's almost a full-time job in that house. 
I am making a white cake, and it is my daughter's birthday. My daughter loves strawberries, and I'm going to decorate it with a lot of flowers. She loves flowers. It's kind of heart-wrenching for me, because it's the first birthday I've missed in 17 years. What about Christopher, though? He seemed to be really confident, very oh, confident. Oh, Christopher, you know, the pastry man. I'm making my variation on an opera cake. It is a mixture of chocolate and coffee. It's a cake that I started in high school and has slowly been built up over the years by techniques that I've learned. I have five minutes to get this cake in. Mm -hmm. I'm get this in the oven. They gotta get it baked and cool down, ready to start building their uh, cake. Get in there, Bobby. And while it's cooking, you need to watch it because you may need to turn that cake so that it rises evenly and has an even color to it. Christopher, do you have any semi-sweet chocolate left? Yeah. Thank you. Kristen. Hi, Shan. How are you? Good. What are you doing? Banana split cake. Something that the children at uh, daycare would really enjoy. But you know your next door neighbor, Angie over there, is also doing a banana split cake. I heard. What's going to give you the edge? Chef, I think the, the way I'm going to decorate my cake will make me come out on top. You're confident. I love it. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Hey, Andrew. May the best cake win. <laughs> I have no idea if I can pull it off. I'm not confident. Let's start this again. It's not done. You have 15 minutes left. Your cake needs to be out of the oven. Come on, now. Oh, take a look at Michael's cake. Michael's cake is bluer than your hair. Nothing is bluer than my hair. Oh, I'm gooey in the middle. You gotta remember, you gotta cut that cake into a perfect four layers. Perfect. David, you're sweating. I sweat. I put this pressure on myself. My son's birthday today. Wow, so there's two of you with, uh, with birthdays today. It's amazing. Excellent. So you're making a peanut butter cake? Peanut butter and chocolate. Standard vanilla icing. Cover the whole thing with pretzels. My favorite part is dipping in the uh, batter. Yeah, it's the best part of the cake, isn't it? That tastes good already. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Ten minutes! We are low on time. I'm putting so much pressure on myself. My internal temperature is just roaring. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, my god. I've burnt the peanuts. I'm not failing on this challenge for JJ. I work. Where's the piping bags? I love a great cake, nice and moist, tasty, but it's the icing I look forward to. The beauty of having icing is that you can actually cover a lot of your mistakes. It's a baker's trick they don't know never happened. Michael. Hello, Chef Alvin. So you're doing like blue suede, blue velvet. Honestly, it looks like blue carpet. Definitely will not taste like carpet. What are you doing? So I'm going to alternate between uh, cream and blueberry filling so that the blueberry filling isn't too rich. So you're going to do four layers in this thing? I'm going to try. Is that all the cream you're going to put in? Oh, I can put more if you like. You know, when you cut it up, you want to see the layers. I want to see nice, thick layers because it makes the cake rich and delicious. You got it, Chef. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. You know, David's cake looks absolutely amazing. He handles that spatula like a pro. Well, it's very similar to concrete. It is like troweling. My secret weapon is the fact that I am a talented concrete guy. Hi there, Christopher. Hello, Chef. That's a beautiful technique there. Where did you learn that? Years and years of experience. What else are you going to do now to finish the decoration on this cake? Chocolate curls. And you're tempering the chocolate to get the curls? That's right, because otherwise they won't have big, nice curls. Wow, that's amazing. I'll let you carry on. Thank you, Chef. One minute! Oh, no. You don't have much time, actually, though. I'm going to make this work no matter what. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Ooh. 1. Hands off your cake. Tonight, the judges are choosing two mystery box winners. This is the best cake that I've ever made. I think I nailed it.
both will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. What I'm most proud of is that I was able to channel being a dad on this cake. Today, we've been so impressed with your creations, we're going to be calling up four of you. I'm at least one of the four going up. I have to be. The first cake that we want to call up was made by a home cook who honored this challenge with innovation and color. This cake looks like a soccer field. I just wish the judges would try it. Please come up to the front. Michael. Whoa! I'm cooking cakes, baby. I'm cooking cakes. This is a blue suede cake with blueberry filling, a little bit of lemon zest, some graham crackers on the side to give a little bit of texture and taste. And I topped it off with some very fine sugar sprinkles. So when I cut through a cake, what I want to see is all the layers all connected. I don't want to see any air pockets in between the icing and the cake. Is that what I'm going to see here? I think so. Wow. That's pretty incredible. Thank you, chef. Well, let's try this. It's a very good cake. It's so moist. I love the blueberry that's running through here. It looks like the kind of cake you would buy in a, in a bake shop. Great job. Please go to the front. The second cake we'd like to see was made with a level of technique and confidence that was nothing short of breathtaking. And that cake belongs to Christopher. Please bring up your cake. This cake really shows off who I was and who I am now. Today, I've done an opera cake, coffee praline buttercream, ganache between the layers, and it's layered all on top of a chocolate sponge. Wow. This is a league of its own. My mouth is watering right now. Thank you, chef. It all oozes out between the layers. It tells me that it is a, such a soft and delicate pastry cream. Beautifully balanced. Big hit of chocolate up front. A touch of that coffee comes in. And then just a slight crunch from the praline that you pureed up. For me, it's best in class. <laughs> Thank you, chef. Chocolate hits you, and then the coffee comes. And after that, textures of the hazelnut. Definitely one of the best cakes I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you, chef. I'll be happy for you to do my birthday cake. Please stand down the front. The third cake we like to see was inspired by a loved one. Please come up. David. The chocolate birthday cake, Philadelphia cream cheese peanut butter uh, layers, and then I covered the whole thing with pretzels and the roasted peanuts. It's my little boy's birthday today, so I put everything into it. It's really hard to get a cake that perfect, rigid, smooth construction. You got the peanut butter, you got the cream cheese, all these comfort things that your son loves. This cake is about love. Thank you. Beautifully cooked sponge, enough sweetness, a little saltiness from the peanut and pretzels. In fact, that flavor is, is quite sophisticated and you can't go wrong with peanut butter. Top marks all around for a stunning cake. But when it comes to spelling? Yeah, I'm not known for my spelling. I think that says hap. It made us all very hap. <laughs> the fourth home cook we're calling up is... Andrew. My cake actually looks pretty great, but this is all an unknown inside this thing. Banana split cake. I made just a simple white cake, buttercream, and I flavored it with strawberries, chocolate, and bananas. It looks incredible from the outside, but on the inside, I want to see a cake that stays together. Yes. Yeah, so you kind of get a bit of a challenge here. You're missing some sponge here. Well, let's try this. and all these flavors and textures that you have going on in here work really well. It's a very good cake. Lynn, who did you choose to give the ice cream maker to? David. David is a savory cook. 
this might not be in Dave's comfort zone. I'm scared about this ice cream maker. I don't know what I'm going to do. This could send me home. <sighs> I've made ice cream before, but not in an hour. I want to make sure I uh, solidify myself in the top four. Ice cream is the most difficult thing in this challenge because of the time. You have 60 minutes. You have to make your ice cream base, eggs, sugar, scalding your cream, infusing the flavors, cooling it down, and then churning it in the ice cream churn. It is a tricky process. David, what flavor of ice cream are you making? I'm doing a uh, vanilla bean, uh, thyme, and lemon. We're gonna do it over top of a blueberry cake. And that sounds very interesting. Who do you think presents the biggest threat for Lynn right now? The guy doing the ice cream. I'm not gonna go out without a fight. Good luck. Thank you, chef. 30 minutes! You only have 30 minutes left! David, he's behind. At this point, the ice cream has to be churning, but he's running back and forth. David is my biggest competition, so it's nice to see him on the edge. I'm so frantic. This is definitely not how I rock it. I am truly freaking out. Five minutes, you have five minutes left! David's taking his ice cream out. It's still a little bit soft. Wow, it looks a bit loose. It looks a little thin. I have to start freezing this darn ice cream. Gotta get it into the freezer. It's gotta work. Looking pretty good. Look at Sabrina, she's still with the pasta. We are either about to taste the freshest pasta we've ever had. Or oh, no pasta. Or no, <laughs> no pasta. Come on now. One minute, you have one minute left. You better start playing now. David has got everything on his plate except the ice cream. But he's leaving it down to the wire. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, hands up! What do you call this dish? This is a vanilla bean lemon thyme ice cream on a blueberry cake with uh, candied thyme and a blueberry coulis. That's a lot to pull off in 60 minutes. Is this the toughest challenge you've had yet? Oh, without a doubt. David, that is spectacular. The richness of that perfectly formed scoop of ice cream, beautiful. Silky smooth, the thyme does come through. There are little thyme leaves in there. Genius. The sponge cake, warm. It's absolutely a heartwarming dish. And these little blueberries, what did you do to these blueberries? I made a simple syrup and coated them to give them a nice little glaze. I bet you Lynn's dying to taste this. Yes, I am, actually. <laughs> One word, sublime. It's extraordinary. I wish your family was here to watch what you've done. Me too. Incredible. Please go back to your station. One thing's for sure, I'm not afraid of an ice cream maker anymore. Chocolate. This next pressure test features our favorite chocolate desserts. My idea of the perfect chocolate experience is the dark chocolate brownie with handmade vanilla bean ice cream. It is pure decadence. When I think of my favorite chocolate dessert, I think of this. Creamy white chocolate creme brulee. When you break into it, it's very important to get the right combination of sweet, crispy, and smooth. I'm a fan of milk chocolate and it's the star of this mouth-watering classic with a complicated twist. A silky smooth milk chocolate mousse with the fresh passion fruit center. You have to make it correctly for this beautiful filling to flow out. I came here to be in the finale. This has to turn out perfect. First thing I do, I get my brownies going. Those things have to bake and cool down fast. Both of them are doing the brownie first. I am expecting that chocolate brownie to be soft, moist, and mouth-watering. Creme brulee may seem like a very simple dessert of egg, cream, sugar, 
and white chocolate. But to get it perfect is very difficult. First of all, when you're doing the water bath, you want to bring the temperature up gently because if the water's too hot, it's gonna become scrambled egg. Uh, a little more time. 60 minutes! You have 60 minutes left! Sabrina. Hi, Chef. You were sounding pretty confident at the top of this cook. Yes. Is, that, is that confidence level still there? Didn't come here to finish third. I came here to finish first. Is there any one of these three desserts that is going to be the most challenging for you? The chocolate mousse, Chef. If there's any air bubbles or gaps in that sphere, there it goes. Tricky. Yes, Chef. Well, I'll let you go, because I can see you're under the pressure of this cook. I'm in the zone, Chef. The chocolate mousse is a very technical dessert to get going. It certainly is. You'll have to take the passion fruit, and you'll have to freeze it into a half sphere. And then you're going to put your wonderful light chocolate mousse, and then your passion fruit inside of the chocolate mousse. That goes into the freezer. The whole thing sets. It's actually one of the most complicated desserts to do. It's very tricky. Ooh, time is a ticking. I'm feeling the burn. I want this so bad. I'm whipping my cream, my mousse. Cream is curdling. Oh, my god. My whipped cream is over whipped, and it curdles. This could be my last cook in the master chef kitchen. I'm scared to death. So, Lynn, how are you? Good. I was doing well. Then my cream started to curdle. What happened there? It was room temperature. Usually, I put my cream in a metal bowl, and I refrigerate it. I'll start fresh. I'm just going to chill it. No biggie. I'm saying those words, but I'm freaking out. So you think you're going to be going up against David? Absolutely. People have not seen me coming this whole competition. You think you've been silently waiting for this opportunity? Yes, sir. Silent but deadly. Good luck. Thank you. 15 minutes. You have 15 minutes left. You better be thinking about plating soon. I haven't put the mousse in the mold for that chocolate round thing. I'm very worried about Lynn's chocolate mousse. Looks a little thin. It's not going to set properly. The tension in this kitchen is incredible. It's like truly like a horse race. These two ladies are tough. Either one is going to be scary in the finale. Doing the top of my creme brulee for me is a cinch. Getting a proper coat on takes multiple applications of sugar. You have to fill in those gaps. I don't like, you know, what Sabrina's doing. You know, she's adding sugar to it, which means she didn't get an even, consistent layer to begin with. And you're now patching it up. If you burn it, it becomes very bitter. Five minutes! You have five minutes left. And remember, it's a replication. But taste is king. My brownie is coming out really well. It's nice and dense. It's also cutting really clean edges. Well, that's about right. Two minutes! You have two minutes left! That doesn't work. You know, desserts need to look absolutely beautiful. One shake of the hand, one misstep with piping out that chocolate, and you've got to start that plate again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one, hands up! Lynn. It looks pretty perfect to me. I like that crack because it's kind of like thin ice. Sugar, coat felt very, very even, and that's what I was looking for. Inside, you have a nice combination, nice mixture of the white chocolate with the egg mix that is close to perfection. Great dish. Thank you, chef. Well, certainly at first glance, it looks like a very, very good replication. The cut on your chocolate brownie looks very precise and clean. Let's try it. The ice cream, I think, is wonderful. Beautiful consistency, has that hint of vanilla. The brownie, I get that dark chocolate richness. I just find this 
a touch on the dense side, and I, I, it, I'm concerned that it may have needed just a little bit more moisture. But a very, very good replication. Well done. Thanks, sir. The splash on the top, Lynn, looks a little messy. Yes, sir. If the center of this dome does not have that liquid passion fruit, it's not going to be good for you. To be honest, I don't know what the inside is going to look like. <laughs> oh. Wow. Let's see how it tastes. You did it. You've just made our job a lot more difficult in picking who will be in the finale. Baking takes the longest time, and I want to get in here and do all the baking first. My plan is to work on the sweet. Going to start with the profiteroles. Looks like everyone is starting with the baked elements. The first thing that I would do is my pastries. The tart has to be light and flaky, dainty. You have to form them. You have to let them set. Everything here lies in the details. Let's show Sabrina we got this. I have no doubt in our abilities together. The girl bakes. I have to put all my faith in Jennifer. Yeah, beautiful. And we're the dream team. Sugar's right there in the jar. I've got it in my hand. Coney and Lynn, they're both very strong home cooks. They also have very strong personalities, and they tend to clash. I would agree. Get all your ingredients you need on your station so you don't have to go back and forth. I'm working on all the pastries at the same time, so I know it's up to me to get all the pastries done. Christopher has the strength when it comes to the pastries, so he's taking the lead. But Michael, what is he going to bring to this challenge? Christopher has the knack of being able to do things in his mind. I got to be able to take it out of his mind and put it down on the stove. Don't forget, we can be switched at any time. Thank you, Michael. Switch! Coach me through this. Okay. Hey, what do you want me to do? Go. Those are going to have to get in the oven here. Toot the sweet, huh? Yeah, just sit. There's no love lost between Cody and myself. There's an age difference, there's a cultural difference, there's different cooking styles. And we don't want to overwork this, no, yeah? No, not my first tart, though, sweetie. I don't know. worry about I'm me. I'm just talking. Sabrina wants us to fall flat on our faces. Tell me to shut up if you need me to shut up. Yep. The plan is to listen to Jennifer because this is her strong suit. What are you working on now? Doing the uh, tarts. Your egg and your milk together, Let's whip it together in there. Face recut it, mix it up. Okay. And I don't think David has much baking experience. His strength is savory. Just slap it in there, because you're going to mix it with the mixer. You got it. You're being amazing. Thank you. Start on the sandwiches. Are you sure? Actually, no. Right now, I honestly think they're at a critical stage. It's really important to understand that your fellow home cook can finish off the task at hand. You're right. Finish this. Check it. Feel it. It's sticky as hell. Of course, it's, it's supposed to be sticky. It's like mayonnaise with flour added to it. Christopher thinks I know what pastry should feel like. I don't. Come on, Michael, you're doing it really slow. Sorry. I think Christopher might actually have a meltdown. 325, don't worry, go, go. It's at 320. No, not yet. You're not done patching. You just told me to throw it in the oven. I said, patch it up and throw it in the oven. Can't read what's going on in your mind, bro. Starting pastry cream. So you're looking for milk. Look at about two cups. No, it's one in one. I've made pastry cream a thousand times. I'll just. Lynn, Lynn, listen to me. Should be three eggs for this. Cody, don't worry, because I always put sugar in here, and I always put sugar in there. <gasps> Cody, don't worry. Lynn, please. It just goes quicker like this. Listen to me, woman. This is my jam. I know pastry cream. You have to trust me on that one. The pastry cream, you have to whip up your egg yolks with the sugar, scald your milk and cream, and slowly cook it out. A lot of things that can go wrong. What do you want me to do? Just mix this? Stir, 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 stir. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Looks like Michael's scrambling eggs. I didn't have time to measure out my pastry cream ingredients, and I just threw it together. More cream. I'm not worried, because I know exactly how to fix it. Keep stirring. Don't let it burn. Christopher is the mad scientist. He knows what he's doing. Put in the strainer. Strain through. What are you measuring out? I need the uh, the milk for the uh, pastry cream. Don't worry about the pastry cream, David. I'll do it. You sure? Yeah. I've taken a few peeks at other teams. I see Christopher with three different things on the go. Three raspberries on top. I 
feel like we're behind. I gotta try to catch up. How many of these we need? We need three, so make six. I'm not gonna make six, we don't got that freaking time. Okay. Got Throw it. it in. Crank up the heat to 350. Lynn, please, yeah. if there's one time in your life that I really need you to listen to me, please pass the cream. We'll be fine. I always strain my pastry cream before I put my eggs in, and Cody always does it after. Please, please, we're cooking our eggs right now. We have to pass it again. But for the sake of teamwork, I do it Cody's way. Thank you. The biggest surprise with Lynn is that she's actually listening to what I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Switch! Yeah, we gotta start moving fast. What do you want me to do? Pastry cream, get two cups of uh, sugar. Oh, yeah. The yolks, true. mix and them up in a bowl. Keep on moving, keep on moving. She seems to be getting flustered. Just go, Chanford, go. All right. Things are getting very tense. They're all doing different jobs. It's hard to tell which one is ahead. I mean, Cody's just spinning out of control right now. Look at him, he's going back and forth. Or you don't need any more. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I know, but you don't need that much. Don't worry about it. There's two cups of sugar, right? Yes, two cups of sugar, yeah. I can't quite remember what goes into pastry cream. Heavy cream, right? Yeah. Is it four eggs? Is it five eggs? Is it egg yolks? Was it, and was it whole eggs? I can't remember. Yolks. Jennifer's the baker, I'm the savory guy. What is she doing coming to me for pastry advice? How much water? Water, no water. No water, okay. I think she's more confused than he is. So I think the profiteroles might be ready, Cody. Take one out just to see what happens. Yeah. Looking good, darling. Check your whipped cream. Whipped cream's not doing anything. Soup. There's nothing happening with it. Do you know what? If we have to forget that, we'll forget that. Something is not right with this whipping cream. It is not whipping, and we have no more cream. We gotta get stuff on that plate. Coming as fast as I can, David. So, you managed to get everything on the plate with varying degrees of success. Raspberry tart. is a little thick, but cooked beautifully. Great sweet pastry, nice balance to it, and that is what gives it the wonderful crispness to it. And I'm very surprised at how you salvaged the pastry cream. It looked awful. Those tricks in terms of bringing things back are sometimes as important as mastering a recipe. Well done, that was very good. A profiterole needs to have cream inside of it and a beautiful, thin exterior that holds everything together. Who made these profiteroles? I made the pâté choux and Michael piped them. Teamwork. That's a beautiful thing. Overall, great presentation. Lynn. Yes, chef. You literally limp to the finish line. What happened? I injured my knee during my service in the military. I've had 11 surgeries, two knee replacement surgeries, and I fell and I hit my leg pretty hard. Well, you're really a trooper to pull through. I don't give up. Cody. Yes, Chef. Do you think the accident affected Lynn's performance at all? There's no way that I could have possibly asked more from my partner. Well, well, let me try a profit a roll. When I cut into this, I want to see it full of that delicious whipped cream. Pretty spectacular. Not bad for a guy with shaky hands. <laughs> the shoe pastry, beautiful. Thank you, chef. A little crispness to it, light, fluffy, whipped cream, likewise. A little bit of a vanilla hit. Really well done on the profit of rolls. Thank you, Chef. I'm gonna try the tart. You got a good balance of sweet and acidity there. This cream is nice and smooth, hint of vanilla, balance of raspberry. It's very, very good. This is a tough mystery box challenge because we've upped the ante by asking them to do two dishes, one savory, one sweet. So I'm starting with dessert, peanut butter and chocolate truffle. This is looking good already. I'm 
gonna make a fireless chocolate cake, and I'm making steamed chicken buns. My dad really likes steamed buns, so it's one of his favorite foods, so that's my inspiration. The dish I would do with chicken is a, a dish that I often do at home. Cold noodle dish, shredded chicken, and peanut butter sauce. I'm gonna make some peanut butter whoopie pies. It's a cake top and a cake bottom, and whipped peanut butter and whipped cream. Come on now. There we go. You like this, buddy? Does this look good? Yeah, it. it looks great. Sabrina is taking her fish now out of the parchment. One minute! Come on, son, you can do this. Cody, he's plating his last few truffles. Sabrina is deboning her fish. Dessert is a chocolate and peanut butter tart, then vanilla bean whipped cream. What dish would your kids eat first here? Oh, without a doubt, it'd be dessert. Dessert? Absolutely. It's amazing. The flavors are all incredible. The chocolate really complements the peanut butter. Just a little pinch of sea salt would help bring everything up. But other than that, great job. Please go to the front. The sweet dish is a peanut butter chocolate truffle. A ganache should be rich, decadent, smooth. Is that what it's going to be when I taste it? I certainly hope so, chef. Cody, big, rich chocolate hits you right up front, and then the peanut butter sort of creeps in behind. And then to finish it off, that touch of sea salt. Delicious. Well done. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Chocolate chunk, peanut butter cookies, and vanilla milkshake. This is one of the best presentation I've seen from you so far. It's not overly fancy. It's natural. You got the Asian hair, and then cookies and milk, but elevated. Well, I can see some of that lovely Kraft Crunchy peanut butter. You hit that right on. <laughs> Definitely a soft, moist cookie. Wow, that is cookie and milk in dreamland. Crunchy peanut butter and chocolate, they're not overpowering each other. And then the milkshake, it complements this perfectly. Thank you, chef. Well done. <laughs> She's really happy. There are six elements on my plate. One of the elements is black olive pistachio dark chocolate bread. I have to get that bread made, because from start to finish, it takes an hour. This dish is all about layers. The first layer is white chocolate graham cracker cake. The second layer, cream cheese mousse with vanilla bean. And on the top are shards of meringue. And for a garnish, I'm doing lemon curd. This is the deal breaker. If this dessert isn't perfect, everything will be for naught. With dessert, it is all about the refinement, and I think dessert is far less forgiving. In pastry, there's nowhere to hide. The dessert I've been working on in my head is very complicated, and I will need an hour and 15 minutes to produce it. And I have 60 minutes. Hi there, David. Hello, Chef. Walk me through each component of desserts. So the crust will be a sponge cake. And that's the foundation, the base. And that will be the base. And then the center will be vanilla cream cheese mousse. Wonderful. And that's what you're working on right now? Exactly. So does this then have to go in the freezer? Yes, into the freezer. Which is going to be the most difficult aspect of this dessert? Just bringing it all together in the time allotted. Maybe it's making your wife proud with this new and improved version of the dessert. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> Thanks, David. Good. Hi there, Lynn. Hi, Chef. Can you walk me through each component of your dessert, please? I have uh, pistachio brittle. My mom cooks brittle, and she puts it in tins, and that's what people want for Christmas. Wow. 
I also have a mascarpone mousse. This is an olive oil savory bread. We all love bread. French people love bread, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm making glazed apricots, and that will be served alongside Chateau de Bourgogne. Sounds like you've got a lot to deal with. Yes, chef. And if there's anyone who can pull it off, I'm going to guess it's going to be you, Lynn. Thank you, chef. I'm working on lemon curd. Every move I make needs to be intentional. I don't have the time to make mistakes. 15 minutes! There's 15 minutes left. Oh, What did he put in there? Curd. He just realized he didn't cook it. I stuck a raw lemon curd into the freezer. I need to cook that. I am in full panic mode. He is really cutting this close. I'm not sure he's going to make it. 10 minutes, Chef. 10 minutes left. Here we go. This is very, very close. He is really cutting this close. I see nothing, nothing on the plate. But Lynn is almost finished. Five minutes. You have five minutes left. Oh, my goodness. This is unbelievable. So finally, David is now starting to plate. He's starting to put together his dessert. You got it. Oh, my god. He's still running around. Lynn is already finished. One minute. You have one minute left. He's still got to put his meringue on. It's going to be within seconds if he pulls this off. You can do it, Dad! Yeah. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! My dessert is a lemon curd parfait on a graham cracker sponge base with meringue. Are you as surprised as we are that you pull this off? I wasn't going to give up. Not today. No way. Can't wait to try it. I really adore all the flavors. The presentation to me is unique. There's so many textures happening here. You have crunchy from the meringue, soft from the mousse. The cake is sensational, flawless. You know, David, I am impressed. You really elevated your wife's lemon dessert here. The star of the show really is this lemon curd because the sharpness and the sweetness, that balances perfectly. This, to me, is heaven in a spoon. The mousse is light and fluffy and delicate. The lemon curd, if that had not made it to the plate, this would not be a successful dessert. It's very well done. Thank you. Lynn, please bring up your dish. My dessert's a plate on a cheese plate. It has homemade chocolate olive bread, pistachio brittle, a mascarpone mousse, candied apricots, and my favorite cheese, Chateau de Bourgogne. Well, then, this is an intelligent dessert. The chocolate bread with the pistachio and the olive goes very nicely with that salty cheese. And the apricot, that's delicious. This is a plate I would like to share with my friends. Lynn, the mascarpone mousse. Mascarpone can be extremely rich and heavy, but you were able to present it in a way that delivered a featheriness to it. My only comment would be the brittle, because that was the sweetest element. I felt it was a little bit of the odd man out. But everything else was really very, very good. Thank you. Lynn, you've done something very, very rare on this cheese board. You've mixed two ingredients that work so beautifully together, the olives and the chocolate. 
It's actually one of the most memorable things I've had in the entire competition. I would serve that in my restaurant any day.